pro tip to create a killer email marketing strategy. And it's from Mir Korthand, who writes the website Simplifying Digital Marketing and Blogging. So it's a killer email strategy. Yes, email oh. marketing strategy, yes. Okay, you do understand I need bullet points. So you have bullet points here? I certainly do. Okay. She had them set up for us, so we're good. <laughs> Okay, so it's possible I might like this because it's already set up in bullet point form. Okay, I'm ready for it. Okay, so she the first point is that she says, define your email package, view your emails as a tiny package. So your brand and product should create an experience for your customers and readers. And I think the biggest thing to take away, especially to just to start out with defining your package, is this not only applies to online businesses, but it also implies to brick and mortar businesses. You have to have an email marketing strategy. So many um, businesses right now are relying on Facebook ads or they're relying on social media. And with all the algorithm changes, the only thing that you actually ever own that's on the online space is your email list. Interesting. So the, the so the concept is to make sure they are giving you their email in some way or somehow. Yes, whether you have a product that you are selling, or you have people coming in to buy coffee, or if you have a, a website where you're just creating recipes and people are coming over to get those recipes, you have to have an email list in order to create that relationship with your audience. Okay, good. That's number one. Number two. Yes. Number two, she says, determine the scope of the email package, frequency of delivery, exact type of packaging used. So in other words, she's talking about how often are you going to email your list? When people give you their email address, they're giving you access into their inbox. And with the way that things get flooded now, you have to make sure that they understand how often you're going to be emailing them. Um, I belong to a local gym, Burn Boot Camp, which is all around this area, and they're very clear on how often they're going to be emailing me with different things that they have going on, whether it's a promotion for the month or if it's a challenge that they're trying to get you to get back to, into the gym. So defining how often you're going to be emailing your list is huge piece of this that you know i never thought about that because we've got a database probably i don't know maybe 10 11 000 now of people that are looking for businesses right you know or own small businesses and looking for something else and i'm really afraid to send out too many things to them because they love to get an email from me that says we've got these types of businesses that are for sale because it's kind of interesting right but they don't want to hear from me every tuesday you know after a while so i'm not sure how much to to, to send out and this is kind of interesting because it's saying let them know i'm going to send you something out once a quarter mm -hmm. once a month or whatever yes and you'd actually be surprised at how much people do want to hear from you you would think that they wouldn't but if you're delivering quality content where you're helping them figure something out improve their lives they want to hear from you more often than you would actually think okay that's a good tip Yes. Number three. So, uh-huh. So decide on your opt-in strategy. So in other words, how are you going to get them onto your list? Are you going to offer them a coupon code? Are you going to offer them something to download that is um, a mini cookbook? Or is it going to be something where they can use a checklist? Whatever it might be, you have to have a strategy in place that's in line with your content. That's the biggest thing that I see people missing out on, whether it's brick and mortar or if it is an online business. They create these freebies that they offer their audience, and they're not in line with the content that they're actually creating. So even if you've got an email, it's not for the kind of person you're interested in anyways. Exactly. And you just end up paying for that person to be on your list. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what you said was exactly. You're going to be great co-host. I can tell already. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's like in my case, everybody in my database has inquired about a business of mine over the years. So I know they are people looking for businesses and that sort of stuff. Yes. So but if it was somebody that filled out a form to get a free car, it, it, I don't care if I've got 200,000 in the database, it's, it's not going to help me. Yes. And if you can define what they're there for, what types of businesses. So you've told me you've sold restaurants. So right. are they looking specifically for restaurants or are they looking for a coffee shop and if you can distinguish that within your list you can then make it that much more targeted and make sure you're sending them what they want got it okay good 
Um, okay, number four says choose your email list promotion and growth channels. So in other words, how are you going to grow this list? And I know this might make you a little uncomfortable because we're going to talk about social media. Oh, boy. <laughs> But you have to decide what's going to work best for you. One of the things that we actually talked about before we even came on, because I asked you, are we going on Facebook Live? Facebook Live right now is huge for any business, whether you are brick and mortar or you are a gym or you are online, because Facebook Live gives you the opportunity to reach so many people, plus they get to know you that much quicker because they learn your mannerisms, they learn the way that you talk, they learn the way that you teach. They might not like that when they figure that out. (laughs) (laughs) That's okay, though. There are those you want to attract and there are those that you want to repel. And that's so walk me through this because I've been on Facebook for years. I don't do it. You know, my Mm -hmm. factotum, Julie does that right. Or the radio station does that for me. But I I spoke at the uh, high school in in Statesville and Julie just uh, first of all, let me make this clear. I still might fire her over this. okay? but (laughs) but but she just put her phone up and went Facebook live with it. Right. And it was just a talk on talking to, to these high school kids about about there are other ways that you can be very successful and make a million dollars, and it's and it's service-related businesses. You don't have to go to college to do that. And at the end of that talk, she, she uh, sent that email to me, and there had been over 5,000 people that had watched that. Yes. Now, here's what I'm confused about. How come when she puts a Facebook post out, right, maybe 200 people look at it, but when she went Facebook Live, 5,000 people looked at What? Why is that? What's the difference? Facebook wants you using live broadcasting. They just want you to use it. So right now, it's not as saturated as your Facebook post, as you're, you know, saying you're sharing pictures of your new baby or your wedding or whatever it might be. So because of that, they're pushing it out to more people. And especially as a business, if you can get on live broadcasting, get past the fear of it and get out there and share yourself with them, Facebook pushes it out to more people. You'll see your reach increase. And you're going to be able to engage with your audience in a way that you normally never could have done. So Brian and Chris have been trying to make this show Facebook Live, and I keep telling them no, so I've been wrong about that. You absolutely have been. <laughs> oh, come on. It was, that was not necessary to ring that bell. Told you so. I, and she did say exactly during that time also. Okay, okay, gotcha. What else you got? All right, number five, determine how you will nurture subscribers. So once they come on your list, you don't want to just let them sit there because now you're paying probably to have your list and you're paying for them just to sit there. So you want to engage with them. You want to set it up so maybe they get a four-day welcome series where you're going to be introducing them to your business and what it is that you can do for them because just because they saw you on a Facebook Live or they saw a post on Instagram and decided to sign up doesn't mean that they know every single thing that you do. So you have to give them an opportunity to know that by engaging with them with your list. And I don't have to be afraid that I'm going to be bugging them with this four-time hit of, of education or what would what, you call that? It was, it was a... Welcome series. Welcome series. That's what it was, a welcome series. Yes. Okay. And you're saying it's okay if I say, this is a welcome series. This is one of four, two of four. Okay. Yes. I'm getting absolutely. that. Okay. Okay. Got it. 